Good afternoon, everybody. It is now just past 1 o'clock, which means every team in the NFL must be at the 53-man player limit on their roster. And we haven't yet been fully informed on every team's cutdown, but we have most of the information now. That includes the Seahawks. As of right now, we don't yet know everybody the Seahawks have released, but we know, I'd say, a little more than half of it. So they're slow rolling this a little bit. They're not even beating the buzzer. They're sneaking it in after the buzzer. Well, in reality, they can't do that, but we don't know about it yet. So later this afternoon, we should get some further clarity on what the 53-man looks like. But uh, let's go over what we know so far as of 1 o'clock. So, started pretty early this morning with the release of Kendall Randolph, the uh, guard from Alabama. A guy who I, at one point, had on the 53-man because we were so low on guards. But I knew it was a little bit of a long shot. And as the uh, offseason went on, I thought it would be more likely that we put a guy who's a little bit of a veteran, like a Greg Island on the uh, 53-man roster. So Kendall Randolph waved. Could bring him back on the practice squad. Decent possibility. But that is your first uh, waiver of the day. And then a little bit later, we waved Matt Gotell, the uh, nose tackle, who actually played pretty well in the uh, preseason. He played really well, in my estimation, in that final game against Green Bay, and I thought there was a possibility he made the roster just because of the injuries we have at that position with um, Monet and Young and, uh, to a certain extent, even Faolu. But um, for the moment, he's not making it. Now, it's always possible that the Seahawks wave a guy and bring him back the next day after they resolve the rest of their roster. Like, if they end up putting Cam Young or Mike Morris or maybe even somebody we're not really thinking of that much right now on IR, that opens up another roster spot. So some of these guys could come back. And Gotell could also make our practice squad and then get to play for the Seahawks a couple times this year because of that. So definitely keep an eye on that stuff. But uh, Gotell for the moment has been waived. And this is a guy who honestly at this point, I hope he comes back in some capacity. Maybe not on the 53 man, but he's got to be a good practice squad candidate. Uh, the next waiver came less than an hour later. Matt Landers has been waived. Um, he's a very intriguing, fun player, but not ready to contribute at the NFL level yet, I think. So, really good chance he gets to the practice squad, and I hope he does, because I definitely want to bring him on. So, that was the uh, first receiver to get waived today, and then there was another one not too long after. Aesop Winston Jr. was waived, basically at the same time, honestly. Um, or at least it was announced at the same time. I thought Aesop had a chance to make the 53-man because of some of the injuries and the suspension to D. Eskridge, but um, for the moment, he is not. Now, again, this is a guy who could be brought back tomorrow or the next day. I don't think there's going to be anybody pounding down his door trying to get him on their 53 man I know he played pretty well in the preseason I know he looked like an NFL receiver in the preseason but I don't think there's going to be any massive demand out there for Aesop Winston so you might see him bob around for a day or two and then we bring him back after we clear the deck a little bit because Derek Young and Cody Thompson are both IR candidates uh the four-week variety so don't be shocked if Aesop is back and actually playing for us come week one, week two, week three. Um, Brady Henderson also has this. Ty Okada was waived right after 10 a.m. So this is basically in order in terms of like a timeline thing. Um, Ty Okada was waived, UDFA from uh, Montana State. Didn't notice him a ton in the preseason, so I didn't really think he had much of a shot. But with some of the things that were happening behind him or excuse me in front of him on the safety depth chart I do think he might have a chance to make this practice squad so keep an eye on Ty Okada he may very well sneak on the uh, practice squad here because of a situation with another player that I'll get to in a couple minutes here um, Levi Bell was the first kind of big blow of the day this happened just before 10 30 a lot of people are going to be very disappointed about this Levi Bell was waived He's a guy who we are definitely going to try to get back on the practice squad, but 
I think we all have to understand that the odds of him getting on the practice squad are not that high. He played so well this preseason, there's definitely going to be at least one bad team that is willing to spend a 53-man uh, roster spot on him, I think. Like, a good team, maybe not. A good team can't be messing around with a fringe player who may or may not have just feasted against terrible competition, but a bad team can afford that. A team like the Texans can afford that. A team like the Cardinals can afford that. So I would expect Levi Bell to get poached, but if not, if not, we can bring him back. And I guess there's always the possibility that after we clear the decks a little bit in terms of guys we put on injured reserve and uh, PUP stuff, maybe we have a spot open to bring Levi Bell back in. Possibly. So don't count it out. But this is obviously not a good sign for him staying in Seattle past um, the, well, past today. Uh, next wave was Greg Island. This one's a little bit of a surprise to me. I thought he was going to sneak on just because we needed offensive line depth. I do expect Island to make the practice squad as long as he slips through waivers, which he probably will. So I think Greg Island is going to remain in Seattle. I think he's going to remain a Seahawk, but... I thought he had a real chance at the 53-man. Not happening. So either we're going to acquire a new offensive lineman from another team through the uh, waiver system after all these cuts, or we're just going to roll with, I guess, nine offensive linemen, which, I mean, I guess that's okay. At the end of the day, if your offensive line gets injured to that degree in the middle of a game, you're probably already in a lot of trouble. So it's not like that would ruin anything if we only run with nine offensive linemen but Greg Island was a guy who I thought was maybe even even if you were talking about nine offensive linemen on the team maybe making a push to push uh, St Stone Forsyth off the team but uh, so far that hasn't been the case um, Tyler Mabry was the next wave um, Tyler Mabry kind of a stalwart kind of a permanent fixture on this practice squad so I didn't think there was ever any real chance he was going to make the team. And I don't think he'll have any problem getting through to the practice squad. So I think we'll see him again in the next few days here. Um, Joey Blunt was probably the second somewhat interesting cut. Most of these have been slam dunks, but Levi Bell was the first interesting cut. Now we have the Joey Blunt cut, which is also at least worth talking about. He's getting waived with an injury designation. So he did get hurt in that final... Um, preseason game and I guess it is pretty serious because we are waiving him with an injury designation so the way this is going to work is if he clears waivers which he probably will because he's hurt he goes on our injured reserve list which would mean he's out for the season but he's still with Seattle so that seems to be the most likely way this goes the other option would be at that point he could get an injury settlement from the Seahawks and then just leave so I'm guessing that he clears waivers and he reverts to our injured reserve list and that's how this story ends. So I think that Joey Blunt is still going to be a Seahawk, but he's not going to do anything this year. Some people were saying that he uh, broke his collarbone on that uh, preseason play that knocked him out of the game. So that would, yeah, that would knock you out for the season in all likelihood. So it looks like that's going to be what happens here. It's too bad because he did play decently for us last year as a special teamer, but so it is. And just a, about an hour ago, we got this, Patrick O'Connell also being waived by the Seahawks. Um, he played better in that last preseason game. He's a candidate for the practice squad, I think, but I can go either way on this one. He really didn't look good in his zone drops against the uh, Cowboys, Definitely a flawed player, and unless there's something really wrong with V Jones's ankle or Vi Jones's ankle, then I don't think we need to put him on the practice squad. I guess it's a little better than BBK just because BBK is physically broken right now. It seems to me, but uh, Patrick O'Connell is going to be a practice squad candidate. But no surprises that he's uh, getting released, and that about catches us up as of 1 p.m. Now, we uh, did get some further clarity from a Corbin Smith over here about how many more moves need to be made as of 1 p.m. Monet and Faolu are on the PUP list. If they do not get taken off the PUP list, 
before, I think, the end of today, then they have to stay on it for the first part of the season. So that would mean that's two more players we don't need to worry about releasing because those two guys would be on the PUP, which means you don't count against the roster. So that would mean we only need to make 13 more releases to get to the 53-man roster. And then he also added in that D. Eskridge being suspended also counts because he won't be on the roster, but he'll be on the team. So that would mean as of 1 o'clock today, there are 12 more cuts that need to be made in order to get down to 53. So we're basically halfway there. We came in needing about 25 moves, and now we need 12. So, yep, that's uh, where we are as of right now. I'll make another video later when we learn about the other cuts, but that is what we have right now. We have Kendall, Randolph, Matt Gotell, Matt Landers, Aesop Winston, Ty Okada, Levi Bell, Greg Island, Tyler Mabry, Joey Blunt with an injury designation, and Patrick O'Connell. All right. See you guys later. Go Hawks. A um, couple notable releases so far, but can't say anything shocking yet.